Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be sharing my tips on how to get your first graduate job. So let's just dive straight into it. Any form of work experience that you can get before you apply for your first graduate job is going to help you out massively. It could be a two month, one month or even a one week long internship. Either way, that experience is going to help you out in the long run. Even asking for something which is like an unpaid internship for like a week or two weeks, it's going to really help boost your CV and kind of put you ahead above other candidates. In the current climate where companies aren't really hiring many people, offering yourself up for like a week or two weeks of unpaid sort of learning experience, um, they're more inclined to sort of take you up on that and maybe just showing around. They're not going to want to be paying like a summer intern for you know a couple of weeks or a month you know invest that sort of time when they're not really going to get a return on their investment i'm just being quite honest so in the current climate even if you can't get something which is paid just go for try and get something which is you know, an unpaid internship the reason why i say to go for like an unpaid internship if you're really struggling to get something paid is you just want to get your foot in the door get yourself into the office into that engineering consultancy environment even if that's the sort of thing which you want or just anything to get yourself in that door it just expose yourself to the experience even if it is just shadowing someone you know asking a few questions or they might set you a couple of examples get you to like read a few books you know, you're dedicating time you know a week or two weeks just to focus purely on working in that environment or reading up engineering stuff for a week or two weeks and that is going to be really, really beneficial to put on your CV and just your overall learning in general. So how do you go about getting work experience? Well, I think the best way is by sort of connections through family or friends. Um, knowing someone, you know, that way to get your foot in the door is probably the easiest way. I know not everyone's going to be fortunate enough to have people that they know working in engineering, um, but that's probably the easiest way. If you're going to be going about it on your own and you don't have friends or family to rely on, um, you know, don't be put off by that. Just get your CV, get a covering letter sorted and just like email it to companies. Or you can go one step further and just go knocking on company doors. I've actually found that receptionists are very, very welcoming. You know, if you go up to them and just um, speak to them and say that, you know, you're looking for like a summer internship, you've got your CV and you've got covering letter uh, printed off, could you, you know, and ask them to just hand it over to, to someone who might be interested. I think the receptionist will probably more likely just do it for you. You know, they'll probably understand your situation. You're, you're just after for some experience and then, you know, they're gonna help you. And by, and by doing the sort of knocking on the door approach, you're more likely to get your CV read because you know, if you send an email, you know a lot of people are so busy nowadays that they'll see an email like that come in and they'll just they'll just you know, delete it straight away. They're probably not interested. But seriously, knocking on the door of the office and just passing your you know your CV straight over that's probably like the most direct approach you can get, and it really shows initiative as well. Another reason why I say to go for a summer placement or just like an internship, if you perform well, you never know they might like you very much and they might sponsor you a bit for the rest of your degree and they might even be open to offering a job once you graduate. Make sure your CV is well written and showcases all your skills. Here's my CV when I first started applying for jobs. I mean look how bare it is, it's just like embarrassing but it was quite literally all I could actually put on. I was lucky enough to get a summer placement for a month and I think that extra experience just really helped bolster my CV so that when I was applying for graduate jobs I think that kind of made me stand out above everyone else who hadn't applied for um, like a summer placement or hadn't gotten any previous experience. Most companies will probably require a covering letter. I do suggest that you practice writing one, you know, looking on Google um, and just looking for a bit of advice. Like, I don't think you need to you know, pay for anyone to write a covering letter. There's plenty of free advice out there. Um, without going into it, I think best thing to do is just keep it um, simple straight to the point you know you're looking for a job these are the skills you know just don't waffle is basically what I'm trying to say so if I was to be writing a covering letter I'd probably be answering the following questions you know, you know why are you getting in touch why are you suitable for the job um, 
what can you do for the company and then just reiterate and conclude you know there's four questions but they're, they're you know a couple of sentences each is enough you know a few paragraphs nothing substantial there's a huge attraction for every graduate to apply to every large engineering consultancy under the sun because they want to work on those like really big flagship projects which you know gets all the headlines trust me I, I, you know, I was one of them I didn't really know any better and I was you know applying to every large company I could but the truth is as a graduate you're never going to be working on those projects the people that work on those projects are going to be you know very very experienced you know people who work on those huge you know superstar projects they're not going to get like a zero plus years graduate working on it for them working in a large consultancy you'll be working on you'll be working on like pretty big projects but most likely you'll be working on a very small aspect of it like foundations you know you could you know the foundations part of this massive project could take months of work but you'll be solely focused on it so you might get really good on foundations but that is all we're going to be doing for a few months if you see what i mean the big companies that people like to apply for are people for the likes of like arup Bureau Happold, Acom, uh, WSP, uh, Mont McDonald, Jacobs, you know, these are all huge companies and the way that they do their application for graduates is they have a huge list of questions that you have to go through and it's, I mean I understand why they have to do it because they get so many CVs and applications in that they need some way to screen it but it is just the biggest pain in the ass to go through these questions. I was one of them, I was doing this like constantly throughout my degree and it, you know, doing these applications took hours and it was just so painful and you could just never hear back from them. They get so many applications that they just don't give a shit and if they don't like you, they just dump you in the reject pile and they never get back to you. I only ever heard back from WSP. I got invited to an interview day, or well, graduate day, whatever they called it. Um, didn't get a job, but that was the only company that ever got back to me and I applied to all of them. Um, so all I can say is just don't get too discouraged if you don't hear back from them. Um, it's just the way that is. Here are some pros for working for a large engineering consultancy. There are loads of fresh graduates, so you know there's plenty of opportunities to make friends, and you know you can all like learn together and grow together. Um, working in a big consultancy, there's like big corporate lifestyle. Um, you're going to be in a very protected and safe environment. You know it's very hard to do anything wrong because anything which you do it's going to be checked very thoroughly from like a senior and a director which is really really good it's probably going to be scoped to work on some really big national or even international projects if you go for like a really large company there's prestige and bragging rights that you know get to work in a company like i don't know like arab or something and they'll generally have pretty good training schemes so for your chartership you know they'll probably be able to fast track you in into getting your chartership within three or four years here are some cons to working for a large company um, that can be, like I mentioned earlier, you can be um, pigeonholed into working on the same project for ages, but not just the same project, on just like a tiny aspect of it. You never get to see the full picture uh, or the full project. You're just working on like a really tiny bit of it, but like a big tiny bit of it, if you see what I mean. Even though it's very good to be in a you know well-protected environment, it's quite hard to necessarily stand out because um, because you are so protected, it's quite difficult to sort of demonstrate your ability to work alone. And that is actually a, a core objective with the ICE. You can also feel lost in a big company because there's so many people in the company, you are literally just a number to them. It's probably generally harder to move up sort of um, the corporate ladder because there's so many people fighting for promotions. Um, you could, you know, if you're not standing out quick enough, you could be a graduate for quite a long time. And I have known a lot of engineers, you know, five plus years of experience who still have that graduate title. My own personal advice is to go for a sort of small to medium sized company. I would kind of lean more towards a medium sized company because you kind of get the best of both worlds from a large company and a small company. With small to medium sized companies, you know, you're not going to be answering those tedious, tedious questions, you know, which will take you hours and hours. At best, you'll just need your CV and a covering letter and you send it off and hopefully you'll get an interview. Um, and I think that's probably the best way because people who answer those questions, you know, it's all bullshit. 
you want to be interviewing people face to face because that's just how you get to know people and even in an hour long interview you're not really going to get you know you don't want to get all the information but i think it's just so much better doing a face to face to interview and even if it's two interviews if you hate answering long tedious questions i think applying to a small medium sized company is going to be perfect because at the best you just need your cv and a covering letter so here are some pros to working for a small or medium sized company you're going to have a wide range of small to medium sized projects that you can work on you know projects which you can see from start to finish or you can get a much bigger picture you know you won't just be stuck doing foundation design for this project you know you'll be doing the foundations the ground floor or superstructure the roof you know you'll be doing everything and after maybe a short amount of time you'll probably even be going to some meetings and getting experience like that i don't think you'd really get that in large companies you know they're probably not going to be willing to you know have you come along, you know, tagging along into meetings and not contributing anything. They'd rather have you just smashing out numbers in the office. Because they're going to be smaller projects, you'll probably be working on a, like a bigger quantity of projects, so that exposes you to more design in other materials. Like, you know, if you're just doing foundations for a massive project, you're literally just looking at foundations and concrete. Whereas if you're doing a whole bunch of smaller projects, you'll be looking at foundations, you know, I don't know, like a house in masonry, maybe like a small steel frame, a bit of concrete, superstructure, you know, you'll be exposed to loads of this stuff. You can probably feel a bit more impactful in a small to medium sized company, you know, you can actually feel that the work that you're doing is contributing to the success or failure of the, of the company. Smaller companies can have a more sort of family friendly approach to it and that might be appealing to some people who don't really like that sort of crazy, big, large corporate lifestyle. The way smaller companies operate means that they'll be taking a lot of smaller projects to plug in the gaps between sort of medium and large size projects. Um, this can mean that things can get really hectic and if things aren't managed well, um, you can feel overwhelmed with you know, juggling lots and lots of tasks. This can be a good thing if you know how to manage it well, but just be wary that this can happen and probably does happen quite a lot. I'd say job security in a smaller company isn't quite as secure as a medium or large sized company because they have larger projects that which they can use as sort of protection. You know, if they've got these large projects, you know, from a different office, they can potentially offer you up for secondment and you know you'll get to keep your job, you'll just be working in a for like a different part of the company and if things get better you can you know move back into your original team. But in a, in a smaller company, you know, if suddenly they had a couple of projects, you know, big projects which they were lined up to do and then they just fall through and then they don't have any other work to do, there's not much that the company can do other than, you know, get rid of you, <laughs> which is the harsh reality of it. This is also why I think a medium sized company is kind of the company to sort of go for as a, as a starting graduate job because you, you get the best of both worlds. Some smaller companies may not offer you like a training scheme, which really isn't the end of the world in my opinion. I think, I mean, I was technically on a training scheme, but like, you know, I did like everything myself, basically. I didn't have any, um, you know, strict deadlines to me. I kind of just did it as, as I wanted to. And then as I did it, my SCE had it signed off for me. So like I said, it's not really the end of the world, you know, you just got to be a bit more organised about getting it done yourself and being proactive about doing it. So to kind of conclude this video, my general advice is to go for a medium sized company, um, mainly because I feel that they can offer you a much wider range of projects for you to learn. You know, applying for a medium sized company, you probably won't have to spend hours and hours writing and answering really tedious and shit questions. I'm absolutely not saying don't apply to big companies. Um, if you definitely want to work for a big company, just go for it, you know, apply, by all means, just do it. But don't get disheartened if you're not successful. I think a lot of people, you know, hang all their hopes on landing a job for a big company, um, but then they don't see the benefits of working for a smaller or a medium-sized company. If you are going to be applying to large companies, don't neglect the smaller and the medium sized companies, apply to them too because you just want to cover your bases and you, know, you, you don't want to end up not having a job. It's better off to have a job in a smaller or medium sized company even though it's not 
and what you necessarily wanted. Once you've got a couple of years under your belt, if you still want to move to a big company, it's going to be a hell of a lot easier once you've had experience to sort of jump ship to a bigger company, if that's what you really want to do. I know it can be like horribly deflating to not hear back from an application or get rejected, but unfortunately that is just the way of life. I've been through it, I apply to loads of companies and like I said earlier, not heard a single peep from them. These are just my personal opinions. I might possibly have a slight chip on my shoulder when it comes to really big companies. Um, I have worked for small, medium and large companies, so I do have some credibility. If you want to learn more about the companies which I've worked for and the experiences I've had, feel free to go check out my careers journey video. If you have any specific questions, please just leave me a comment or get in touch through LinkedIn. Some other guys who have been watching my videos have gone in touch and I've been able to help them out as well. So that's been really, really awesome actually to know that people actually find my content useful and I can help them in some ways. If you feel a video on writing your CV might be quite helpful, just drop me a comment as well. Thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers.